Do you purchase NVIDIA stock before or after the announced 10 for 1 stock split? Will the company continue to grow at a rate that will maintain the rapid performance this stock has seen over the last year, just the last few months, and most definitely over the past five years? Will NVIDIA be able to continue generating results that exceed Wall Street estimates and expectations and see its shares rise further? How did the Q1 numbers compare to those of the previous year, even just a quarter ago? How does the stock look technically after the battle? We have a lot of questions and answers about NVIDIA, so hopefully all of you investors are doing well. We only get four chances to do this, and today is one of the biggest. With the ticker symbol NVDA, NVIDIA Corporation is one of the most significant stocks. Some could even argue the most significant stock in the stock market, so we have a lot to discuss. Shares have increased by 25% over the past year, which is impressive. More impressive, in my opinion, if you go back a little less than six months, right after the chat GPT and long after it was established that NVIDIA is the Michael Jordan of the GPU AA data center industry. Extend this thing to five or 10 years and the shares are still up almost 100%. So really, there isn't anything to be upset about. We'll get to that right away because the company announced a 10 for one stock split. Some retail investors or newer investors may not know how a stock split operates or may be unsure if they should wait to buy until after the split, which takes effect on June 7. In essence, if you were to purchase NVIDIA shares today and you wanted to purchase a single share, you would have to dig into your pocket and withdraw $950. Let's assume that NVIDIA shares will round this up to $950. Therefore, if the 10 for 1 stock split occurs tomorrow, you would have 10 shares of NVIDIA rather than just one valued $950 in your account. To do this, you would need to divide the $950 by 10. Therefore, after the stock split, you would essentially have the same amount of money invested in NVIDIA as you did yesterday. The only way that stock splits really affect the stock price or your decision to buy now or later is if you have a brokerage account where fractional share investing is not permitted, in which case you would withdraw $1,000 to purchase a single share of NVIDIA. Right now, those of you who trade options might want to hold out because that single share will only cost you maybe $100 in the future. There will likely be some effect on option prices since NVIDIA's price will drop following the stock split. However, NVIDIA's significant $2.3 trillion valuation means that there aren't many companies worth more than it currently. The only ones left on the list are probably Apple and a few others. If NVIDIA wants to surpass Microsoft, it will need to post strong earnings over the next 12 to 24 months. And that is precisely what the company has been doing over the last year. They also declared a 150% increase in dividends, up to 10 cents per share, which when you look at it, is obviously rather insignificant. However, if they keep raising the dividend by this much every year, this could become one of the greatest dividend growth stories ever. Meanwhile, Q1 revenues are astounding, coming in at $26 billion, exceeding expectations by roughly $1.5 billion, or 262% year-over-year growth, and for the past year, the business has been doing just that. Additionally, they announced a 150% increase in dividends, to a maximum of $0.10 cents per share, which is obviously quite small. But if they continue to increase the dividend by this much each year, this might turn into one of the greatest dividend growth stories in history. Surprisingly, Q1 revenues exceeded. Forecasts by around $1.5 billion, or 262% year-over-year growth, with a total of $26 billion. If we look ahead, not just at the upcoming quarter, which we will discuss, but also a year from now, the expectations for NVIDIA are $32 billion. If you think the company has a chance to reach $38 billion or $40 billion, and if we look forward and they can double revenues again up to $50 or $60 billion, you can almost certainly guarantee that you're going to have fantastic stock performance from this company. If you believe that NVIDIA will likely see a 100% increase in value, that is probably the case. Once more, you must have faith in these predictions as the year draws to an end. This is what the stock market is all about. It's not so much about this quarter as it is about next quarter. 
Instead, it's more about next year and the potential to invest $32 billion in NVIDIA next year. Let me ask you this. What if their estimate is $32 billion? The stock will perform reasonably well, and the shares are likely fairly, fairly valued right now, but there won't be a dramatic outperformance like there will be with NVIDIA in the future. The way this company could become the most valuable in the world is if we can turn $32 billion in revenue from the first quarter of next year into $40 billion or more. Anything above 40 will undoubtedly push this company's market capitalization to $3 trillion, and we'll talk more about that here in a moment. We also have Key2 Outlook, and they're continuing to surpass both the revised up expectations and the revised up Key2 Outlook. We recently released Q1 results, which we'll discuss more here, but we also have Key2 Guidance, which was expected to be roughly $28 billion. The consensus estimate was for $26.64, and the high end was 292 so they're slightly below the high end, but only comprehend the game. The majority of you are aware that this company is going to set the bar at $28 billion with the expectation that they will surpass it by, say, 2% to 5%. In reality, the likelihood is closer to 10%. NVIDIA is likely attempting to convince its sales force to generate $30 billion in revenue in the upcoming quarter, if they are capable of doing so. If Q2 is going to be $29 to $30 billion by the time we get back, well, I think it's sometime in Q3, possibly even Q4, and we could definitely push these revenues significantly higher than the lows. Well, shares should maintain at least the level or right around the levels that they're at. That is undoubtedly a possibility, and something that is on the table. One thing to keep in mind is that as we start to see really good performance from NVIDIA, we'll start to slow down a little bit and start seeing growth of 60-50 or 30% instead of 200% or 100% growth. If NVIDIA is able to meet these expectations once more, that's where the upside in the stock will undoubtedly come from and the estimates on the revenue and profit sides will obviously need to hold steady. In other words, if your expectation graph resembles the one that NVIDIA has been showing for the past year, then the reason why this stock is still rising isn't just the revenue growth, which increased from $7.2 billion to $26 billion in a single year. Even more impressive than that are the gross margins. TSM the company's suppliers, estimates that SK Hynix is likely looking at these margins and thinking, maybe we can raise prices over at NVIDIA. Last quarter, revenue was $22 billion, so we bucked on almost $4 billion in revenue because, my goodness, the gross margins, which were 64.6% .6 last year, have soared to 78.4%. Whatever they're doing, I don't care. They could be selling software, luxury products, perfume, or anything else. Gross margins of 78.4% are amazing. In the chip industry, they were at 76% last quarter, and we love that huge profit margin. Therefore, if NVIDIA continues to outperform and maybe becomes the most valuable stock in the world, the first quarter of 2019 is when we should expect that to happen. Their revenue needs to be at least $40 billion, and their margins should be in the mid-70s. In the upper 70% level, there's a good chance this business will be mentioned among the world's most valuable. Operating expenses have essentially remained unchanged over the past year. Sure, they have increased from 2.5 to 3.5, but with $20 billion or $19 billion more in growth, you would expect some operating expenses to rise. Later on, We'll go into greater detail regarding those. What's really impressive, though, is the growth of data centers. Last year, NVIDIA's stock took off, generating $4.3 billion in revenue and reaching a high of 22.5 on that data center. The gaming industry is still doing quite well, despite the fact that it is declining sequentially and somewhat on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. The remaining business units, on the other hand, are so small that they essentially do nothing. With $26 billion in revenue, the cost of revenue was $5.6 billion last year, which translated into a $2.4 billion gross profit. This is what makes the gaming industry so impressive.
and it is also the reason why this company in particular has the potential to become the most valuable in the world, and the research and development costs increased from 1.9 to just 2.7. Take a look at sales general administrative costs, which increased by 200%. Revenue increased from 633 to just 777, mostly as a result of the products selling themselves. Take a look at the total operating expenses, which increased from 25 to less than a billion dollars to 35. I mean, you almost never see this with any company. Operating income increased from $2 billion to nearly $17. Billion net income from $2 billion up to 15 It doesn't matter if you're offering ad chips or dog dung. Your stock should at the very least have increased by 205% over the past year if you perform these kinds of financial calculations. Because of these financials, which are really impressive, the company doesn't have a lot of long-term debt, about $8.5 billion. And with these kinds of results, you're not really concerned about that at all. After looking at the cash flow statement, you can see that last year's net income was only $2 billion and that the operating cash flow increased from $3 billion to $15 billion over the course of three months. It's worth noting that when we look at Google, Apple, and Microsoft, they're kind of in the $2 billion range. Nevertheless, if this company can maintain its revenue growth, it won't need to invest in its products because they can sell them on their own. It won't need to build large data centers or hire a large workforce in order to get the operating cash flows necessary for this company to become as valuable as Google, Apple, or Microsoft. In contrast to Intel, this company can now legitimately become the most valuable in the world because it doesn't spend any money on its manufacturing facilities. Not over the last year, over the last three months, what they spend it on. Well, they're buying back the stock. So I mean they're just doing that hand over fist nearly $7.8 billion. They paid a couple of dividends and that's it. You don't have to spend anything. You're not in Ohio. You're not in Arizona, you're just spending a little bit on acquisitions, and that's it. Therefore, forget about revenue growth if you can maintain this cash flow. If you can grow revenues at this company above expectations, especially by 20 or 30%, you're looking at Microsoft and this company becoming the most valuable companies in the world by this time next year. But even if you don't meet those targets, and we assume that these expectations are Realistic, you should still expect HQQ-like results and outperformance over the S and P500 and other indexes. Additionally, you will generate enormous operating cash flows that will be used to repurchase shares of NVIDIA, as we have seen work extremely well for Apple over the last several years, if not the last decade. The stock hasn't increased significantly in terms of revenue, but it has improved slightly over the last year or two from a technical standpoint so Jensen Huang should be present on the conference call. It appears that in the after hours we are pushing up to all-time highs up here back up to. We'll call it close to $1,000 fact. We've clipped the 1,000 mark on NVIDIA in the after hours. These are areas where I would not blame any shareholder or even after the glowing review of these financials and even the outlook for NVIDIA. Jensen Huang is one of the greatest talkers in the world and is probably one of the best CEOs when it comes to hyping his own product, hyping his own company. It's definitely worth listening to or reading through the conference call. This is the part where you take a few things off the table, people. You invest in the stock market in order to make money and then go do something with that money. NVIDIA is not your wife or firstborn son. It is perfectly acceptable to peel off a few shares and get rid of them in order to buy a new car, a vacation home, a Rolex, or anything else of that sort. All of that is what I have done in the stock market. And I can tell you right now that I have never regretted selling stocks like NVIDIA, which I have also sold to Apple, Microsoft, and Google. I have used the proceeds to buy a watch, a vacation house, and lovely things for my family. I have never looked back and I have no regrets. We have talked about how far NVIDIA shares can go. And as of right now, nothing in these financials or the outlook leads me to think that this will slow down significantly over the coming year. The only thing left to ask, in my opinion, is how much will NVIDIA perform better over the coming year and how much higher can it go in terms of valuation than NVIDIA's Q1 results.
In conclusion, whether to buy NVIDIA stock before or after the 10 to 1 stock split is a decision that depends on your individual investment strategy and risk tolerance. A stock split, by itself, doesn't change the intrinsic value of a company, but it does make shares more affordable to a broader range of investors, potentially boosting liquidity and market interest. NVIDA's impressive Q1 earnings report highlights its robust financial health and growth potential. The company's revenue surge, driven by strong performance across its gaming, data center, and AI segments. This performance not only underscores NVIDIA's dominant position in these high-growth markets, but also its ability to innovate and capitalize on emerging technologies. For long-term investors, NVIDIA presents a compelling case. The company's strategic initiatives in AI, machine learning, and high-performance computing align well with future tech trends. Additionally, the growing adoption of NVIDIA's GPUs in sectors like autonomous vehicles and robotics suggests a sustained demand trajectory. Thus, buying NVIDIA shares can be a valuable addition to a diversified portfolio focused on future growth sectors. On the other hand, timing your purchase around the stock split can also be influenced by market sentiment and price movements. Historically, stock splits can generate short-term price volatility. Some investors might choose to buy before the split to benefit from potential pre-split run-ups, while others might prefer to wait until after the split when the shares might become more affordable and the initial volatility has settled. Furthermore, it's essential to consider broader market conditions and economic indicators. The tech sector, while promising, is also subject to macroeconomic factors like interest rates and inflation, which can impact stock performance. Monitoring these factors can help you make a more informed decision on the timing of your investment. Ultimately, the decision to buy NVIDIA before or after the stock split should be guided by your investment horizon and financial goals. If you are a long-term investor, the timing might be less critical compared to the company's long-term growth prospects. NVIDIA's track record of innovation and strong market presence makes it a solid candidate for those looking to invest in the tech sector's future. We hope this analysis helps you make a more informed decision about investing in NVIDIA. Whether you decide to buy before or after the stock split, remember that thorough research and understanding your investment goals are key to successful investing. Thank you for watching our analysis on NVIDIA's stock split and Q1 earnings. If you thought this video was helpful, kindly give it a thumbs up. Remember to forward this information to others who could find it useful. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, Investing Tutorial, for more insights and updates on the stock market. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our latest videos. Happy investing!